a day, everybody, and welcome to another Google Classroom tutorial. My name is Tina Atticade, and today I'm going to be taking you on how to create a rubric and use that rubric to grade your students' work. Um, so let's go ahead and start by going into your Google Classroom. Hi, everybody. So we are in our classroom, right? Let me move myself out of the way here. Oof. So we're in our classroom and we are in our classwork because we're going to create an assignment. That's how we would work on the rubric. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create here. We're going to go into create assignment. Let me go ahead and move myself down to the bottom here. Okay. And we're going to go through all the motions of creating an assignment the way that we normally do. I'm going to title this demo, um, demo rubric. Okay. And then my instructions, of course, you give instructions as you normally would for your students. Um, and then I'm going to create, I'm going to go ahead and upload a file with this particular attachment. I'm going to go into a recent file that I had actually already used. I'm going to click on that file and insert that. Remember, I'm going to do make a copy for each student. I'm going to come over here to the left side and I'm going to select my classes and my students and I'm going to change my point. Because I'll be doing SVG, I'm going to go ahead and go with four points. It's the highest grade that they would get. Give my due dates and we'll go ahead and have this due this um, Friday. And then I'm going to pick my topic. It'll be a math topic. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the rubric. So when you use the rubric here, it's going to attach to the assignment so the students can see it. And then you can actually use the rubric to grade the assignment, which makes life way easier, right? So we're going to click on rubric. Our choices here on the drop down menu are to create rubric, reuse rubric, or import from sheets. Um, I have never imported from sheets, but I imagine if you have that available for you, it would just import that. We can try that on another tutorial. But I have created the rubric and you can reuse an existing rubric that you already have. So once you create this, if you're using your proficiency scales, you wouldn't have to recreate that for every single assignment. But for our training purposes, we are going to create a rubric. Let's click on create a rubric. I'm going to go ahead and move myself up here dead center again. So now here is my rubric. I'm in the um, creating phase here. My criterion title that's required, you need to name your rubric. So because this is a math one and I'm using a proficiency scale, I might go ahead and just name this um, the standard and I'm just making the standard up right now. NBT, I'm sorry, it's four NBT, I think one. We'll call it that, okay? My criterion description, this is however you want to describe your titles for your um, students, your proficiency scale. I'm going to go ahead and do the cut and paste method. And what I would like to do for the proficiency scale, because this is how I would use it in my classroom, I come over to a proficiency scale that I have pulled open. I'm going to go ahead and just pull open the um, name of the actual um, for NBT here. It's numbers and operations in base 10. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to copy. I'm going to come back over here, come into my description, and I am going to paste it. So copying and pasting makes things a lot easier. Um, again, you can import from your uh, file, your Excel file or your Sheets file, but I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste. Now we're coming down to the rubric itself. Your rubric can be as many points as you need it to be. I'm going to go ahead and go with four points because my proficiency scale has four levels. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now my points that are required for each one, you just come over to the next one and you could just type that in. You can come over here or you can use these arrows up and down till you get to what it is that you want. For me, typing it in is a lot faster. Then my level titles, um, whatever it is that you name your levels in your classroom. Um, for my level one, novice, and then level two, um, you can put there needs um, needs assistance. Oops, sorry, needs some assistance, right? And you might have something else there. And then level three, three proficient. And then level four, exceeding, right? Whatever it is that you want to title those particular um, levels, that's what you'll put. Now for my description, that's going to be the actual scale in there. So I'm going to go back to my open scale that I have here. And I'm going to come down to my level one. And what I'd like to do is actually use my I can statements there, right? 
with level one, there really isn't an I can statement here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Bring it back over to my description and I am going to paste that, okay? Do the same thing for all my levels. Again, I'm using my I can statement because that becomes familiar with the student. That's the learning target for them in each of those levels. So I'm gonna quickly come through to each level and I'm going to copy and paste. And last one is level four. Okay, so if you are not copying and pasting, all you are going to do is fill, in out, fill out your points required, then you would level um, your level title, and then you would put the description for that particular level. So if we remember rubrics from our high school days or our college days, you would just indicate what is, what's here to um, meet that criteria for level one, two, three, four, and so on, okay? Once I'm through with that and I, I went through and I just made sure that everything is supposed to be how it is, I just come up here and I hit save. And then there you go, your rubric has been created for your students and then all I'm going to do is assign. And that is it. That's how you create a rubric and attach it to a particular assignment for your students. Um, it's as simple as copying and pasting or putting in what it is that you want to do. Now, just real quick, let's go ahead and see that demo rubric with the assignment. So I'm going to click on my assignment here. I'm going to view the assignment. And because I have students in this classroom, I can actually go into their particular assignment here. Oops, sorry. I don't want to pull up. Well, yeah, I can. I'm going to pull up Bella's assignment right now. She hasn't done it, obviously, but when you go into the actual assignments, let me move myself out of the way. This was a Google, um, this was a Google Slides. If you come in here, if we come down to the rubric, right, I can click on the rubric itself and I see all of my points here. I see what it is. If I've gone through all of this, okay, and usually you won't make your slides this long. I've gone through this and I've checked it and I have enough information for me to give my, um, um, to, uh, to assign Bella a, a particular point. I can just actually come into the points here. If she's proficient, I'm gonna click on proficient. And if you notice right over here, it actually scores it for me. And then I can return the assignment to Bella and it's already corrected. Um, for me when you use the rubric. So kind of easy where, again, you're giving that feedback to the students already that they are within that particular, um, they're within that particular uh, level so that they know exactly what it is that they did um, to reach that level, okay? So that's how you would actually grade it, return the assignment, and then we are done with that. I'm not gonna return that assignment because it wasn't done, but that's it. That's how you get to the rubric. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial and if you have any questions feel free to reach out and email me at kakade um, at gdoe.net and I would be happy to help you. I hope you all have a great day. Bye for now.